Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new season. I mean, I guess we're three games in. I haven't been making videos because the games haven't been good enough to do them. But now we're back and with good reason is because Saints have finally uh, got got something out of a game. Uh, I feel like we deserved something out of the Liverpool game last week, um, but we didn't because it's Liverpool. Uh, but we managed to get three points, winning 2-0 away at Brighton. I mean, I can't remember at what point in last season we got our first win away at Palace, but... I'm pretty sure it wasn't this quick and I'm pretty sure we weren't as confident in, in our players uh, at that point in the season. But now, somehow, I say somehow, this game was a train wreck. <laughs> this game was terrible, realistically, as a Saints fan to watch. Um, we got very, not lucky, but some of the things that happened in the game just went our way and not particularly down to our methods of play or any tactics that we had. It's just they got a red card and they hit the post and I feel like they should have had a penalty um, with a handball with the new VAR handball well the new handball rule if it hits an arm in the penalty box and they should have had a penalty but um, and I feel like it did hit one of our defenders Benarek I think it was Benarek it was either Benarek or Hoybier hit him in the arm uh, but you, you know like who cares uh, at the end of the day we scored twice and um, we won. So I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on this match because it was really horrible. If you can't tell from my sweaty face, I had a, a horrible time watching this. I mean, it can't. It doesn't help that it's 26 degrees outside. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a pain, really. Uh, but watching that game, I was on on the edge the entire time. I was, I was nearly crying with the stress, especially when we went one nil up. I found that that just awful because knowing Saints and knowing Saints last season, our defence has never been brilliant. And the number of times we've let uh, let points slide uh, from winning positions is like a Premier League record, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, at least we were highest in that stat. It's not a stat you want to be the best in. Uh, we were highest in that stat last season. Um, but yeah, overall thoughts of the game, right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through uh, how I think every player on the Saints team played uh, because I think that that's quite a good way to get my my overall opinions of the match. Uh, out because I can I can go through every player and try and remember because it's quite hard this I'm reacting as soon as the game's finished it's quite hard to remember what every single player did in the entire match um, right starting with our keeper Angus Gunn uh, who hasn't looked as good as he did last season um, in these first few matches um, I think he looked okay today like he looked he looked good enough he didn't actually have that many saves to do a lot of the a lot of the time the ball was just coming straight into him we were actually quite lucky that uh, Brighton's shooting wasn't great today um, and all the shots that went on target pretty much were almost straight at uh, gun. So I think he did well. One thing I don't like uh, was him trying to play uh, his goal kicks out to our left hand side uh, where we had uh, Danzo for some reason. I don't, I'll get onto that in a bit, but we had Danzo there and I don't remember him winning a single uh, like header straight off of one of our goal kicks so it just seemed like a bit of a pointless way of taking them but saying that I'm quite glad that Gunn didn't try and do the short short goal kicks and just try and play out from the back because I can't trust the Saints defenders not to make mistakes uh, speaking of Saints defenders uh, Valerie I think that Valerie had a really good game uh, for as long as he was on he actually came off pretty early on might be a bit of an injury worry because obviously he was involved in that red card challenge which Nobody can defend, like, nobody can defend uh, Andone for that challenge. It was terrible. <laughs> it was really, really terrible. And I couldn't see it the first, when it happened in the game, but you can see the reactions of, like, Duffy, um, who was, like, directly behind Andone. Just immediate, like, you're going you're gonna to get sent off. So, um, at least, like, that you can see the transparency on the pitch in the Brian players going, yeah, you, you fucked up there. Um, but, yeah. I think Valerie played well. He managed to draw that that red card, which ultimately meant that we somehow got something out of the game. Um, and he came off early on, uh, like fifty third minute for Genepo. But I think he he played a good game. He he wasn't able to get his attacking side on, but we were playing four at the back, so I guess that kind of halted him a little bit. Um, Bednarek, uh, who was my favourite player last season, actually, I thought uh, once Hassan Hintel started playing him, well. Hassan Hoodle just played Bednarek. That was like our our consistency last season was just that we kept Bednarek on the pitch. Um, I don't think he played that well today. Uh, I think he had a few patchy uh, passes and clearances. Uh, like I say, I think he probably like should have received a yellow card like, and there should have been a penalty because uh, the ball, I, I really do think the ball hit his arm. 
uh, before he cleared the ball. We were quite lucky in that regard. I don't think Bednarek had a good game. I hope he, he gets back to his form because he was fantastic last season. And Our defence wasn't great, but he was definitely the high point last season. So if he can get back to his form, please, please do that soon. Uh, Vestergaard, I think, had a much better game than uh, we've seen of him in the past. Uh, I actually said that, uh, well, I talked about this to my family last week. Uh, I think that he, he actually played an alright game. Obviously, you're playing against Liverpool. There's not much you can do uh, against forwards like that. But I think he was, he was okay last week. And today, um, for the most part, he was very commanding. He's using his height well, because he's got it. Um, but often you see him losing aerial battles, and that's kind of scary. Um, but he played played well today. Won a lot of aerial duels. Uh, played up in the back. Was always there to stick a like a, a solid foot in, and there were a number of those. And he didn't get a yellow card or anything. He just played consistently well. Uh, Danzo played his debut, and uh, that was nice because we saw I saw his name on the team sheet. They put him as the like the pitcher front and center, and I was like, oh yes, we got Danzo on. And then I realised they're playing him at a left back. Uh, so I think Bertrand picked up a knock in training yesterday. And so we don't actually have any left backs because uh, we sold Target for 17 million. Yay, profit. <laughs> and uh, I can't remember if uh, Ramsey from the academy, I can't remember if he plays right back or left back. Anyway, we had Cedric on the bench, but obviously they decided they'd play Danzo there, maybe because he was just like tall and strong and had a good throw on him, uh, which he didn't. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't think Danzo had a very good game. And I said how him and Gunn, they didn't really play well from the goal kicks, but I also think that Danzo's not a left back <laughs> and like fair play, he's come in on his debut to play in a position he doesn't normally play in and you can see that he, he just wants to slow the game down and play from the centre of the pitch, like play the ball out, whenever the ball came out to him and we had the chance to use a bit of pace and attack, he'd always play it back to Vestergaard or to Bednarek and I think that's just because he he's a centre back and his throw-ins weren't great either I don't like he's a really really strong player but I can't see why if he's going to be playing as a centre-back in the future I don't see why he'd be taking throw-ins that far up the pitch like normally we have Vestergaard or Bednarak taking throw-ins when it's in our own half or a little way up the pitch but not not that far forward so I don't know how it's going to work if he's going to keep playing as a left back or if he's going to play in a centre I just hope that they play him in the centre because uh, I think he's very defensively minded and it's a shame when you've got you're replacing someone like Bertrand, him and Redmond, their link-up plays fantastic normally, so we kind of missed that today. Uh, so I hope Bertrand comes back, uh, but I don't want Danzo to be put on the sidelines because realistically he has potential. He's very big, very strong. Uh, like I think, I think there's potential there. Romeu, I think, had a good game. Didn't get a yellow card. That's quite rare for him. Uh, but they're, uh, again, like Romeo, uh, well, like Romeo, Romeo's game is he makes mistakes sometimes, as in just the pass is a bit weak and it means that we have to slow down our attack, things like that. There's there's little bits that he needs to improve on, but I think he, realistically he he played all right. Uh, Hoiberg, I didn't really notice him today in the game. I, I, maybe because he's got a less iconic haircut to uh, Romeo in, in that he has hair. Uh, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't really pay attention to Hoiberg on the on the pitch today. He got a yellow card. That was kind of disappointing. Um, but I, I guess he must have played all right because like, playing a four two two two, yeah, that's the right number of twos. Formation is quite difficult, uh, and I think Hoiberg quite likes being an attacking player, and that was a bit like it was kind of muted a bit today. So. Uh, I think he played all right. Well, Prowse kind of slipped into a right pack position halfway through the game, uh, and I think he played well. He was very like he took nothing from any other players, and I was really worried that um, he was going to get sent off because he got a yellow card pretty early on in, in the match. Um, somehow he managed to keep his head because he's a bullshit player. Like he he will rile people up, and you saw it. There was a I was a part in the game, and I think it was Montoya just got so angry with him <laughs> just because he refused to to be helped up from the ground and it, it, it kicked off a bit. So I'm a bit concerned, but I think Walprowse had a great game. Whipped in a few good balls, really good corners. Uh, we just don't have the aerial presence considering we've got really big centre-backs. That's kind of disappointing. Um, Redmond, quiet game for Redmond. He, he, I think he thrives off of the link-up play with people like Bertrand. Um, and playing in the 4 2 2 2 maybe doesn't suit him yet because we don't really play that formation. But um, when he did get on the ball, he looks brilliant. Uh, his link up play with Bufal for the second goal was great. He timed his run perfectly. 
Um, and he got a really good chance, like a massive run underway in the first half, which I think he could have done better with. He just got his foot through the shot uh, a bit more, but I think he played. I think he played all right. Uh, che Adams, um, in my opinion, should have scored uh, from the corner uh, that we had. I, like the corner, we had a few corners. Um, I can't remember exactly what happened. I know that it came from the left hand side. The ball kind of dropped in front of him five yards out, and they got blocks in, but. Really, the keeper was kind of unsighted, and I'd like to see him score because he needs it. And also, he's in my fantasy team, uh, so I, I kind of need that boost. <laughs> Please, everyone's doing terribly. Uh, and Danny Ings, I think, had a, had a good game, but again, quiet. That's the thing I can, I can say from this game is, realistically, there weren't any key performances from the starting eleven. There weren't any people that really stood out to me. Uh, but that like that changes instantly when you look at the substitutions. So... Uh, like I said, Genpo came on for Valerie in the 53rd minute and immediately looked like he could run, like, just, oh, it was it was beautiful. And he looked really good when he came on against Liverpool. He looked really dangerous. And today he just, he just proved that. He got a yellow card for a, a stupid challenge. And I think he's actually quite lucky. If his arm was any higher, I think he could go for that uh, challenge. He kind of got an elbow around here on one of the Brighton defenders and that was quite lucky but and then uh he could have got sent off for diving after that um there was a point where he definitely went down looking for a foul didn't get didn't get given it and it went out for a throw in and I was really scared he was going to get sent off but because that was after his goal and I was like he's come on he's just done this the goal oh how <laughs> how <laughs> have we it's the new Mane he's it, oh it was just a beautiful goal and I think um, he deserves so much praise. That's a man in the match performance by him to come into the team and just make such a big difference running up that left-hand side, which is exactly where he's meant to play because uh, that's where he was playing before we signed him. Uh, and he was tearing Ajax defence to shreds. And today he, ca he came in and had that had so much space on the left-hand side. He was just cut inside and curled it. So much dip and curl on that, on that shot. The keeper couldn't do anything. And it was, oh, it was just beautiful. And I, I like it's a good, it's an amazing goal. It's not going to win awards, but that is crucial because that that kind of signaled the turn of the match. Uh, it, it led us to believe like if we put a bit more flow into the game, we're, we're going to create more chances. And as soon as that happened, we did have quite a few more. Uh, and there was a point when Armstrong came on later in the game, like eighty fourth minute. Uh, he had a good chance. Keeper did a good save. Um, I like Armstrong a lot, and I think he played well when he came on as a sub last week as well. Uh, so there's potential there. He did come on quite late in the game though. And Buffal, who who comes in, and I was like, we're playing Buffal and Genepo at, at the same time, uh, late on in the game. So this is either a, a moment of genius uh, or a, just a curse because you've got two very very fast attacking players who will just take it around everyone, and and but they can't defend realistically. Uh, I say that Genepo actually did some decent defending in the game. Um, but somehow it, it worked out. Um, Buffal managed to set up the, the second goal with an amazing little little dummy to get right on the byline and play it straight across the keeper. I'm surprised the keeper didn't get that ball, but um, I'm really glad Redmond got a goal because he needed that last season when he finally scored and he got his season underway. So maybe getting it done earlier means that he's going to have a boost for longer. And uh, like we're playing on Tuesday at Craven Cottage in the Cup, which I'm actually going to. That'll be nice. Um, so hopefully that little boost has meant that we're gonna we're gonna really perform and have some creativity. Uh, so yeah, Buffal, Genepo, brilliant substitutions. Armstrong looks promising. I feel like he needs to have a bit more of an impact though. Like he should be put in earlier in the game. But uh, I think Hasenhut talk. I think he trusted our our team maybe too much. He left it very late to change anything other than the like the first substitution, 80th minute to bring on two attacking players. It's quite a risk um, when you're when you're one nil up. So um, fair play to him; he's done a great job, and uh, I'm proud. I was I said I was going to go and do like some more stuff after talking about the team, mate, like the team players. But I think I've kind of uh, covered everything. I covered the red card. Um, I can't believe they didn't score. Like is it Lacadia when he like he hit the post, and the the commentators the the game I was, like the channel I was watching it on didn't talk about that. Um, because I thought that it was offside, um, and so if he had scored, it wouldn't have counted. But no one was saying anything on that line, so I, I don't know if I'm mistaken. 
because uh, obviously the ball didn't go in, so there wasn't like any VAR to check if it was offside, and they wouldn't have concentrated on those camera angles. But I mean, like, I'm shocked he he didn't score. I'm shocked because that was such a good chance. Our defense was looking really ragged at that point. Hits the post, such a powerful shot. And if I'm going to take something out, like something out of of today is like we're very lucky. We're very lucky, and I feel bad for Burnley because. Not Burnley. I don't feel bad for Burnley. Burnley can fuck off. Uh, I, I feel bad for Brighton because they, they played well, uh, as well as you can do with 10 players. Like, I think they played better with 10 men than they did with 11, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, great for us because it means that we've bullshitted our way into three points. But winning 2-0 away uh, is, is no mean feat, especially against a team as ballsy as Brighton. Um, I've been to Brighton a few times. Everyone there is nice, so I'm sorry to all you Brighton supporters, but I, to be honest, if you play like that the entire season, you're going to be fine. I, I genuinely think that. Um, so keep it up, guys. Like, I actually quite like Brighton. They're a good team. Good city. Lots of good vegan food. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm going to leave it here because um, I don't really know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm just chatting a bit of shit. But uh, I will first have a look at the fixtures because I tend to just plan ahead uh, with my videos and so I know what I'm talking about. Like I say, on Tuesday, we're going to be playing against Fulham in the Cup which is nice. Uh, I'm hoping for, for a nice, easy win there. I think going there will, will pile on the pressure for me. Uh, I'm just going to be like, I'm a curse. The last few games I've gone to watch Saints, they've done really bad things. Last season, I went to go see them when they played against Leicester at home. We were 1-0 up, and then Hoiberg dived, got sent off, and then Harry Maguire scored a last-minute winner from outside the area. So uh, I hope I'm not a Southampton curse and uh, that we can go on and improve. So yeah, playing, playing against Fulham on Tuesday, Saturday, Man United. So getting a win this weekend. We didn't want to go into Man United having no points. So that's good. It takes the pressure off the Saints a bit. Sheffield away uh, the weekend after. And then the weekend after that is another South Coast game against Bournemouth. So realistically, I'm hoping that we could take, uh, take a point against Sheffield and three points against Bournemouth. Um, but obviously that depends about how the other teams have been playing. But I mean, I love Jennifer and I think he... he could be a, a big part of this season. Um, it's been a while since we've had a really influential signing uh, in the summer, so uh, especially after like El Yunusi last season. So fingers crossed that uh, they like him and uh, just coming back and, and doing something good. Please continue, Jennifer Musa, you beautiful man. Uh, and on the, on, like, I'm going to leave it with um, talking about Buffal just quickly because. Um, we're apparently losing Lamina um, to Monaco. I think he's going out on a loan deal uh, with an option to buy after the end of the season. And I think that the way that Lamina has treated this, when he decided I want to move, because I love Lamina, I think he's a brilliant player, but he, he didn't care about the team that much. And he didn't have much passion. I'd say when he started playing for us, he did, because he, he came from Juventus. He's going to put all he's got into a new team. But he, he kind of let himself go. His social media habits were terrible. He's just like putting out his own show reels for other teams to look at. I thought that was very shit. Um, but now um, Buffal's come back in and immediately is saying how he wants to really play for the fans, play for the badge. He, he really cares about the club. Uh, I think going out on loan last season made him, made him realise that like he can be valued and he can value a team that cares about him. So maybe coming back in to Saints' squad is a good thing. And if he plays like he did today uh, for 10 minutes, uh, if he plays 10 minutes every game and sets up a goal each time, I will be very happy. So, uh, yeah, I'd, like fair play to Buffal for coming in with such a, a positive uh, like quote uh, and hopefully he can uh, deliver on his promises to be a fantastic player because I think he has the potential as long as he keeps his temperament right. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. It's quite a long uh, wobble. And uh, I'll see you guys possibly uh, Wednesday for me to talk about the, the Fulham Cup game. I didn't talk about Cup games last season, but I might do this time. Uh, and I'm going to try and talk about matches even if we lose them. Because uh, the last two games I, I, <laughs> I couldn't talk about. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see more Saints videos this season, subscribe. Like this video if you agree with my opinions. Comment down below what yours are. Uh, and um, yeah share me around with all the Saints fans out there or Brighton fans if you like uh, I don't know why you'd watch my videos because they're all about Southampton you've got one more Brighton game this season you could look forward to that if you subscribe um, yeah shut up Tom alright uh, see you guys later take care and have a wonderful wonderful rest of your weekend see ya bye